Hi everyone, welcome to Arogya Physio Tips. Thanks for subscribing to our channel and if you have not subscribed it, don't forget to subscribe it and ring that bell. Today we are at Ishana ENT clinic and with Dr. Ramesh who himself is a ENT surgeon. Now uh, there will be a lot of doubts within you what exactly is ENT so Dr. Ramesh will help you clear that. Hi, this is Dr. Ramesh here, consultant ENT head and neck surgeon. And um, I, I sit in Bas uh, Ishana ENT clinic on Banargata Road, Gautigare, above Magnus Diagnostics on the second floor. I am here today to talk or to let you guys know what an ENT surgeon usually treats or what, what, what are the diseases that has been treated by the ENT surgeon. So if you go in alphabetical order, I can say, you know, A is an allergy treated by most of the, most of the cases seen by an ENT surgeon, especially in Bangalore or allergies. And um, the next one is B, bleeding from the nose, blocked nose, and then cough, cold, fever, then, you know, dizziness, the throat pain, um, throat pain associated with tonsil infection, pharyngitis and all those things, if you have any throat pain, so that's been treated by the ENT surgeon. Snoring and sleep apnea and sinusitis, then you know tinnitus in the ear, tinnitus is the sound in the ear, then ear discharge associated with ear pain, um, there are so many other things which is been treated, okay, the, uh, comes, next comes the mass in the neck or the mass we call it as a salivary gland tumors for example, parotid gland tumors, all those things are treated by the ENT surgeon and any lesions on the tongue, throat, it is a tumor again, um, this is all treated by the ENT surgeon, a benign tumor, not a malignant tumor, that's very important to note that benign tumors are usually treated by the ENT surgeon. If it's a malignant tumor, it has been referred to the oncosurgeons or the oncologist for the further line of management. And uh, now I just thought I'd speak about only one topic uh, that's very common in Bangalore, especially because of the weather and the pollution which is there in the Bangalore. And uh, the, the the big topic what I'm going to talk now is about sinusitis. People in a dilemma, whom to see and when to see the doctor when they have an headache related to sinus infection. First of all, <clears throat> patients are in a dilemma to differentiate between the headache uh, which is a sinus infection or a migraine infection because a lot of the patient I see they come to me saying that doctor I have a sinus infection the first and the foremost question I'll ask them is let me know what kind of headache you have I will decide whether it is a sinus headache or the other kind of headache then finally it happens to be a vascular headache or stress headache you know all this headache rather than a sinus headache the difference between the sinus headache and the vascular headache is or the migraine headache is the migraine triggers with you know tension stress lack of sleep and then tiredness the common symptoms associated with the migraine headache is they say when they go to the bright light or when they are exposed to the sunlight they have a headache and the temporal pulsation the temporal pulsation is a pulsation on this side or this side associated with vomiting sensation or you know uh, aura symptoms aura symptoms is something you see the uh, flashes of light in front of the eyes and then throbbing headache throbbing headache is they complain me saying that doctor i feel like tying a now tourniquet or um, a towel whatever it is to the head to relieve get relieved from the pain and um, any increase in noise irritates them very badly and they feel that they have to be left alone and to be sitting in the dark room without any disturbance from others so this, when they give this history, I can I can at least come to a conclusion, if not a complete conclusion, before alerting the patient, yeah, this is not a sinus infection. This goes in favor of a vascular headache or a migraine headache or a stress headache, we call it as. And when we come to sinus headache exclusively, it is usually associated with, you know, it can be a viral infection, a bacterial infection or an allergy. An allergy, okay, first when we come to an allergy, it is it is basically because of this, you know, the pollution, the dust, or um, allergy because of the pollons, all these things triggers a secretion in the nose, and with a blocked nose, and because of this secretion, the sinus will be filled with the, um, the secretion, or the cuff, or the sputum, okay, we call it as a sputum, or mucoid discharge. Let me, let me first explain you what is meant by sinus and for the kind information nobody 
is born without sinus. Everybody has four pairs of sinus. Probably there might be an anatomical variation where there is absence of one or two sinuses. Okay. And this sinus is a God gift to the patient or a person for human beings or anybody for that matter. It is a hollow space which is filled with air to make the skull bone I mean to give ventilation to the skull bone and to now decrease the weight of the skull bone that is called as sinus usually the sinus is filled with air and when it is filled with air the sinus headache chances are very less when it is filled with mucoid discharge the sinus headache is confirmed for that matter if the patient comes to me with a headache and if I happen to find there is a thick secretion in the nose then it is called as sinus infection Okay, I was talking about three types of um, sinus infection. One it is an allergy, one is an infection, and one is a viral bacterial infection and a viral infection. Allergy, as I said, it is you know a lot of sneezing, running nose, watering of eyes, headache, all these things with an accumulation of secretion inside the sinus causes a sinusitis. And bacterial infection is because of the I mean, as it, as it implies, it's a bacteria which causes a thick mucoid discharge in the nose, might be yellowish in color, greenish in color, accumulated inside the sinus. And that causes the heaviness of the head, headache, and you know, tenderness when to touch the paranasal sinus. Paranasal sinus is, you know, the sinus above the sinus, we call it as a paranasal sinus. Touching those things will cause us the tenderness to the patient with pain. And they say when they try to walk, or when they try to climb the stairs, they feel the movement with the pain. That's because every time they walk, the fluid moves up and down and that causes that headache. So, depending upon the severity of the sinus, an EMT surgeon will decide whether this can be an, an severity and the duration of the sinus infection. Usually for the first six weeks, we call it as an acute infection, where surgical management is not required most of the time. We treat this patient with medications, sprays and another antibiotic sprays and uh, if it is a bacterial infection then it is treated with the antibiotics and the sprays to decongest the nose so that the mucoid discharge is going to come out and um, um, you know anti-allergy tablets and analgesic. So this is used to treat the initial stages of sinusitis depending upon the kind of sinus infection. To examine the sinus infection, the ENT surgeon will usually do a clinical examination using an endoscope. That is a clinic practice where he uses an endoscope and watching the system in front of him, he will see whether there is any disease in the nose. So that's a clinical examination what he does. Rarely a sinus infection where an ENT surgeon feels that it is not coming down with the continuous medication, then he will go for a CT scan. To rule out whether there is any polyp inside the maxillary sinus or the frontal sinus, ethmoid sinus and everywhere or the thick mucoid discharge or it is a fungal infection. So depending upon the CT scan report, the surgeon will decide whether to treat the patient medically or surgically if it is more than six weeks and beyond. And uh, that's it about the sinus infection. When it comes to a surgical line of management, patients are usually worried and they think surgical management, once when they operate, it recurs. So with the literature and the research, it says the chances of recurrence is very, very low when they undergo a surgery for chronic sinusitis and a polyps inside the nose. So it's a daycare procedure where an ENT surgeon uses an endoscope and do the surgery with minimal loss of blood. And uh, you know, the surgeon is going to, for example, if a surgeon is going to operate the patient in the morning, the patient can go back in the evening. It's so simple and uh, it, it, it is not a very complicated surgery or something like that. Though it's a delicate surgery, it is not a complicated surgery. That's what I just wanted to say about uh, the surgical part of the sinusitis. Uh, and uh, this, this, this is one thing that, which, is bothered to the, which is bothering the patient very badly, whether they need to undergo a surgery or need to continue with the headache and the symptoms um, without, uh, you know, with the medical line of management, though it is not helping them. Um, I mean, that's it. Um, if you need any kind of consultation regarding the sinus infection, you can just reach me out. And uh, I'm sitting at Ishana ENT Clinic and my number is 9480926833. Thank you.
Sir, we are very thankful to you that you uh, gave that knowledge to our subscribers. Um, it's very important that you don't neglect your problem. You should, uh, so if you have any problem with ear, throat, nose, headaches, you know whom to go now and what exactly ENT means. So you will not be confused now. Uh, thank you, sir, for sparing your time. It is my pleasure always. Thank you so much. Thank you. Do subscribe to our channel and don't forget to ring the bell. And keep your feedback coming.